Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's Monday, it's five o'clock. It's time for a five by five. This is one of my favorite videos of the week. The idea is very simple. I take, uh, I, I take uh, basically five different subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. Uh, there's a countdown timer at the bottom of the screen. When the countdown reaches zero, I move on to the next subject. It's always quick. It's always snappy and you never know what you're going to get. Now today, uh, I'm going to be starting as I have done for the last few weeks with a live performance. You guys seem to be digging the live performances. I've had so much feedback from people that are saying they're finding this really useful. So as long as you do, I will continue doing it. So I'm going to do a live performance that you're going to actually see uh, of me performing in a live environment from my archives. Uh, and my archive sounds like really posh, like from my hard drive, basically. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that footage. And in the second section, I'm going to do a commentary track over the top. And I'm going to talk to you about what I did, why I did it. And we're going to break that performance down in real time. So you can see, uh, you know, I'm going to be discussing stuff like angles and audience management and uh, dealing with spectators and a whole bunch of really important topics that it is really important to understand when you're out gigging as a professional magician. So we're going to do that, first of all, in the first segments but we have got some other stuff coming up as well in this 5x5 including a review of the Night Flight Red, the standard Night Flight Red deck by Steve Della from the Della Corporation uh, that brought out the Red Night Flights and they are sexy as hell I'm going to let you see these, I'm going to break down what I think of them and a whole bunch more stuff so without further ado, let's get straight into this week's 5x5 Very good. This is my big finish this is my favourite trick, I've already pressed the button sir, so you're all good Natalie, we're going to play a gambling game. Not for money, just for fun. You don't want to play me for money, trust me. I should come with the public service announcements. Natalie, I have inside... Hello. You're so excited, you're standing up. After I've done this trick, I'm going to teach you a trick of your own. So sit down for a minute for me. What's your name? Again? Shama, of course it was. It was winter. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to do a gambling game with you, is that all right? Okay. Uh, it uses a few things. It uses a cocktail shaker. It uses a bag. Uh, first of all, examine the bag. Make sure it's okay. It is okay. If it wasn't okay, I wouldn't give you to look at. But feel free to fill your boots. I don't want you saying later on that Craig had a dodgy bag. Is it, is it okay? Is everything all right? Very good. Now, we don't need this part of the cup. It's just this part. Inside this cup, can you see this? There's a, there's a ball. There's a ball in the cup. Examine the ball, examine the cup. Make sure the ball goes into the cup, make sure the ball comes out the cup. Make sure there's no trap. <laughs> Take your time, I get paid by the hour. <laughs> no trap doors, no secret, no tip it up, come back in. Is it okay? I don't want you saying later on that Craig had a dodgy cup, is it all alright? Are we good? I can't even get to it, it's gone. Your milk's in the way. Which is something I've never said before in a performance, but there you go. Right, here we go. So the idea is really simple. We have a cup, we're having a ball. Now the idea is simple. For the game, for you to win the game, you have to catch me putting the ball under the cup. If you catch me doing this, you win. You understand? Now I should tell you I'm pretty good at sleight of hand, so I'm going to try and sneak you, sneak you under without you realising. Are you ready? Well, that was a fun game. Should we play again? I, I, I thought you would have noticed that, but no, I'll go slower. There's the cup. There's the ball. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything till you say go. Was that too fast? I mean, you missed it. Well, no, she missed it. She missed it. She didn't know. See, it's all to do with misdirection. Have you heard of misdirection? It means making you look somewhere else. You, 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 don't look at the ball. Watch the cup. That's where it's going to end up. That's where you have to watch. Look, I'm, I'll let you win it. I'm going to let you win it. I'll show you the cup. Look, 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 Natalie, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball, watch the ball, it goes in my pocket, all you have to do is tell me, is it under the pocket, under the cup, or in the pocket, I'll give you a clue when to win, where is it, trying to help, where is it, seriously trying to help, keep out of this thing, no, no, look at me, you would have said the pocket, you would have won, it's not under the cup, oh, look, it's weird, it's not weird, so, would you like to learn how this works? It's very simple. I'll teach you, and then you can show your friends. Here's how it works. You show the cup is empty. You put the ball in your pocket. You snap, and then you sneak it under the... the you snap, and then you sneak it... Uh, you snap, and then... Hang on, just one minute. Hang, you snap, and... Oh, that cup. That, that, that happens up. No, that happens up. Like that. So that's how it works. The snap is important, and also the tap. So look, I'll show you there's nothing under there. I'll put it in my pocket, tap three times. A little bit harder. See, that's when it goes under. Give her a big round of applause! <laughs> I don't think that was a big round of applause. You do it this time, they're gonna go crazy. I'll put it in my pocket, tap three times. 
No harder. No harder. That's too hard. Do you know what happens when you tap that hard? Do you know what happens? You get one like, you get a tennis ball. Oh, no. 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 Be honest with me. Madly, be honest. Did you see the tennis ball go under the top? No. Now bring it back. Did you see the tennis ball go under there? Then you probably missed the second one. I mean, most people do. Most but you know what, when you go home and tell people about this, you won't tell people about the tennis balls that, and you know what you'll tell people? You missed the moment that the bag disappeared off the table. Oh! I know! Do you know why? Inside the cup, there's the bag, there's the cup, there's the balls, that's the trick, thank you very much, man. Yay! And you know what, Summer, oh, you dropped my ball, there we oh, go. Summer. Summer, you can have this ball as a souvenir, there you go. You, oh, you don't oh. want I have a spare, so I'll use that one. And sleep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So this is the cocktail shaker top chop cup that you can get from Card Shark. Fantastic chop cup. Really, really good. Very expensive, but well worth money. And a few things that I want you to notice right here at the very beginning. Uh, first of all, I want you to notice that uh, I, I actually tell them it's my last trick. And it's my favourite trick. It, it, I, I do that quite a lot when it's the last trick. I go, hey, this is my favourite trick. I also want you to notice how I deal with the little girl. Uh, she stood up. She was right there. I felt that maybe she could be a little trouble. Um, so I said, sit down. I'm going to teach her a trick a little bit later on. Um, and then after this, I did proceed to teach her a little trick later on. Uh, that's the best way to manage the audience when it comes to children at an event that you're booked at primarily for the adults. Uh, also notice that the hook line, I talk on this channel all the time about hook lines, the hook line of, hey, um, you know, I'm going to show you a gambling game. That's very important to me, uh, the hook line. And also, you know, I've talked about characterization on this channel before. My character is the sort of person that does gambling games with my audience. Uh, and, and by now, as this is the last trick of my set, they know that I'm going to cheat and that they're not going to win. Uh, whenever I'm doing a chop cup routine, I like people to examine it, and I even say, hey, take the ball, put it in, tip it out, make sure it goes into the cup, make sure it comes out the cup. Because I don't want people seeing later on, when I've got the magnetic ball in play, I don't want people saying later on, hey, let me check that cup. I want them to know that everything's kosher and everything's normal right there. So I'm explaining the premise. Now, obviously, the nice thing about the cocktail chop cup is there's a second cup that I've already loaded at this point, and that's going to come in play later on. Um, I think it's very important that when you're doing the chop club, you have complete and total clarity of what's going on. They need to understand what the premise is. They need to understand what is going on the entire time, um, which is why I like to explain it, make it crystal clear. Also, I think the chop cup is a little bit like the ambitious card. It's very easy to do a thousand phases, but I like to keep it very, very short in terms of the amount of phases. Now, you can see the reaction on her face and the reaction from the rest of the audience. This is just so magical. Now, you're going to see there's a mistake going on here in a second. Because I'm going to show her that the cup is empty and the ball is already under there. And it confuses me. And I, I, it's because I dislodged the ball too quickly and I wasn't aware. I actually, uh, you know, do this a few times. And notice I just roll with it. When it is underneath there, I just roll with it and I just act like that was what was meant to happen. And it's very, see, there, right there at that moment, it is very important that uh, you kind of just roll with it. They don't know what's going to happen, which is the absolutely beautiful thing. Now, one of the reasons I love the um, cocktail chop cup is because you've got them used to the ball going underneath the chop cup. And it's gone under there three times at this point. That when I do this and it doesn't go under, it's a very funny moment. But then I show that it's underneath that cup. And it allows me to bring another ball into play, which is just a great moment. It's well worth getting. Now, I'm about to do the final load. And the big thing that I can say about the final load is put this focus on the spectator. Get them to do it. You see everyone around the table clapping? They're all focused on that person. I say, hey, if they get this right, give them a big round of applause. That allows me to load that, uh, that, that tennis ball. And obviously, then I put the focus on them again. So that when the tennis ball appears, nobody sees the load of the second tennis ball. And notice I've also stolen the bag, very Tommy Wonder style. Everyone's looking at the ball. The little girl's picked up the ball. Everyone's looking at the little girl. No one's looking at the bag. Th that bag went a few seconds ago. There's two balls in play now. Don't rush this. If you're going to do a bag load, don't rush it. I, I see so many magicians that rush the load of the bag because they're worried that people will notice it's not there. 
I like to have a lot of time misdirection before I do that. And honestly, doing a bag load, if you don't do a bag load in your chop cup, you really should consider it because it is such a strong, magical moment right there. Um, it really is such a strong, magical moment because they just haven't got a clue. They've just had two final loads and then that, that bag just comes out of nowhere. I think the most important thing to take from this video is understanding misdirection, understanding on beat and off beat, and understanding the direction of attention of the audience. Misdirection isn't really misdirection, it's more directing the audience and knowing where they're going to look, knowing and structuring your act so that when the moves happen, they're not even focusing on the moves, they're focusing on something else. Once you've got that down, you'll be able to do anything and nobody will be able to suspect or detect that you've done any move at all. Okay, guys, what I want to do now is I want to do a deck review. And this time I'm going to be looking at Steve Della's Night Flight deck, specifically the new cards he's brought out, which are the Night Flight Red. Now, I'm telling you right now, these cards are absolutely awesome. I'm going to get the camera brought closer in a minute. I'm going to give you a close-up shot of the cards. I'm going to let you see them being farrowed. I'm going to show you them. These cards are amazing. They handle just as good as a deck of bikes. They are priced very reasonably so that you can use them over and over again and they're really 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 well made but they're inexpensive enough that you can wreck a deck and buy a new deck without having to think of taking out a new mortgage they are really well made cards the marking system is in my opinion the best marking system on any deck of cards ever it is the only marking system that i can use effectively in any conditions from a lighting point of view now i know that there's going to be people out there going hey have you seen the dmcs have you seen this have you seen that I know there's other packs of cards out there which are great. These are the only cards. I've gone through so many marked decks. These are the only marked cards that I found that I can use. They are so good. This is. I'm so glad that Steve Dell has decided to bring out the Night Flight Reds because I'm going to be using them a lot. I'm actually starting to create magic with marked decks for the first time after many years of not being able to because I can't read the marks. So yeah, they're absolutely worth buying. They're absolutely worth using. I'm giving give them 100%. I'll tell you right now. And what's really exciting is Steve Della has put together a whole bunch of routines with the Night Flight Reds and he's put them on Netrix so that when Netrix launches, there's an entire section just on routines with the Night Flight deck. I absolutely love these cards. I think they're brilliant. I will be using them. Let's get the camera a bit closer so you can see exactly what they look like closer. So uh, let's have a closer look at these cards, Jack. The get, get in nice and close so this is a, the night flight red uh which as i said before is made out of cardboard uh what's nice is there's no night flight branding on there uh which is important really um you know if people are googling things it's kind of really important it looks really nice uh this is the back design i really prefer it when a tuck case has the back design of the rest of the cards because it opens up so many more possibilities with routines uh, and i do like that, he, that steve's bought this as close to a bicycle deck as you can get while still not being a bicycle deck it's pretty good yeah it looks really good then when you go inside there you go and go into the inside of the night flight stands i love the ace of spades um, with the bat in the center. I think that's really cool. Um, the deck is, it really looks very similar to a bicycle deck, which I think is really important. Um, it handles, the, the pips on the, the aces are a little bit bigger than a bicycle deck, but other than that, it handles very, very similar. Um, the, the, the quality of these cards are exceptional. They really are. They farrow really nicely. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, in with each deck, you have a double-backed playing card, which is very, very useful um, for many different routines, as you guys will be aware. And then you've got two Jokers, um, both identical, um, and really colourful Jokers, very different to other Jokers I've seen. And like I said, these farrow really, really nicely. I will show you, hopefully, if I can remember how to farrow. There you go. Unfortunately, I'm not there. we go. So you can see that they farrow really good. Like that. Uh, it's a very nicely made deck of cards. But obviously, 
as well as being nicely handled and as long as being a, as well as being a really nice pack of cards to shuffle and cut you've obviously got the marking system that's built into it as well the marks are really easy to remember and the, the marks are really easy to see as well so i can tell immediately that's the eight of diamonds that's the six of spades that's the six of hearts that's the seven of clubs that's the seven of diamonds that's the five of spades that's the five of hearts that's the nine of clubs sorry six of clubs i'm rushing now six of diamonds four of spades four of hearts and people five of clubs i could go five of diamonds i can go through the whole thing three of hearts three of spades um regular viewers of this channel will tell you that i'm terrible at reading marks i can't really read marks at all the night flight deck is one of the only decks that marks i can read very very clearly and they are ridiculously clear when you know where they are and you know what they are they're so easy to read but you'll you'll never need to worry about them. Now, the other thing that it's got built into it, as I said, and you won't be able to see this unless you know, is you can immediately tell if a card's a red card or a black card. It's got a very subtle one-way design built into it as well. Um, the one-way design is very, very clever. It's actually the star in the center. Um, if you've got one card turned over, you'll not be able to see in a million years unless you know what you're looking for. So there you go. That's a close-up of the Night Flight Deck Red, the standard edition. Um, they do look and handle really nicely. Right, guys, what we're going to do right now is I am going to do a review. And the review is of 51 times more difficult. 51 times more difficult. And this is by Henry Evans. Now, anyone who has watched this channel for any length of time will know that I'm a huge Henry Evans fan. I did a Henry Evans 5x5 recently. I know that there's a couple of routines that I've given a negative review to, but generally when you look at his body of work, it's been exceptional. After all, as it says proudly on the packaging, he was a world champion in card magic at FISM 2000. Now, on uh, so what, what this is, is this is going to be a review of 51 times more difficult. And one of the reasons that I wanted to review this is because I don't see many people doing this routine i don't see many people performing this routine henry has brought so much stuff out over the years that i think this has flown under people's radars a little bit uh, it's an old trick but it's still available from most magic dealers it's a murphy's item so it's it is in stock i did check and if you know the gimmick to modern times if you have modern times then this is a gimmick that you can actually use uh, this is it's a very similar gimmick that you used in this routine but it's made in a very very different way so what the routine is basically is it's uh you show a deck of cards you have someone pick a card they put the card into the deck and face down along with the rest of the cards that are face down you say that you're going to try and make their card turn over in the deck you then snap your fingers or throw the deck on the table when you do every single card in the deck turns face up except for one card which is face down and it's their card so it's the inversion plot basically um and you know there's a lot of different versions of inversion versions of inversion is that i think there's lots of different versions of inversion this is a completely self-working version but it is also probably the most visual version that you will ever see the gimmick that henry has designed to do this makes everything super easy to do um and at the end of the routine you're left with a regular deck and one gimmick that you can very easily get rid of under the guise of getting rid of the joker now in a minute you're going to see a performance of me doing this routine and you, when you watch me doing it you're going to see that i'm going to take the deck and throw it down to the table and as i throw the deck down to the table it's going to turn face up except for one card which is their card that's the way that i like to do it when i'm sitting at a table but this is a great walk around piece as well when i'm doing it walk around i'll literally hold the deck like this and snap my fingers and i'll have the deck turn face up just like that it looks like it just magically turns face up so you can do it walk around you can do it mix and mingle you can do it big tables it is a really stupidly visual trick it really is and it's a very easy trick to do now one thing to be aware of is that you need to have the deck set up before you go into this routine so you know you need to have the gimmick card set up and this has to be your opening routine if you're going to do it the way that henry suggests doing it in the tutorial so that's something that you need to be aware of um you need to have the deck set up beforehand it has to be an opening routine but like I say once you've done the routine you can then go into anything else you want to with a regular deck of cards it's really visual it's really great it establishes credibility right at the very beginning which i think personally is a really important thing to do when you're dealing with an opening routine it's really important to have that super visual moment that adds credibility and that's what you have here so it's a great trick it's not difficult to do at all 
Um, and I'm going to give this 95%. And what's nice about it as well is not many people are doing it. And because not many people are doing it, um, it really will help you stand out. So there you go, 95%. I'm going to do a full performance of it now, but you can get it from your favorite magic dealer. Just search for 51 times more likely. So I'm going to do a trick for Jack behind the camera. Is that okay, Jack? Yep. Uh, right, have a look at this, mate. I've got a deck of playing cards. And uh, I'm going to take them out of the case, all right? Yep. And this is kind of weird. So I'm going to go through the cards, yeah? Yeah. And you get to pick any one of these. So as I go through, just say stop. Stop. That one right there, are you sure? Yeah. Would you like to change your mind? No, I'm good with that. You're happy with that one? I'm going to show you. Can you look at that card? Yeah, I got it. Remember it, don't forget it. No. Really important you remember that card, because later on when I say dramatically, this is your card. If you got I don't know, it loses its impact. So I'm going to put your card about halfway down. That about halfway? Yep. And I want you to watch. If you were here and not behind the camera, you could square it up yourself. So this is how I'm going to find your card. I'm going to find your card in a really magical way. It's going to happen on the count of three. I'm going to try and make your card turn over in the deck so it's the only one turned over would that be good That'd be very good watch one two i'll do it this way one two three and just like that check that out every single card has turned face up with one card face down and one card only face down in the middle your four of spades what was that your card yeah yeah amazing Right, guys, I want to talk to you now about a trick that I reviewed that came out through Sankey Magic a little while ago. I've already reviewed this. It's called Clearly Impossible by Jay Sankey and Sankey Magic. It is available from Sankey Magic. What it is, basically, is it's a torn corner off a playing card that disappears and appears inside a coin collector's case, which is inside a wallet. And it uses a principle that Jay came up with many, 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 many years ago. I've seen very old Jay Sankey material of him doing this. It's been the same sort of concept has been popularized recently, uh, and it's known as Angle Z. Uh, but it is the idea of a torn corner vanishing and appearing somewhere else. Now, in Clearly Impossible, Jay has this idea of the the corner going into a coin, a coin collector's case, which is inside a wallet. And the whole idea is that you show the wallet is empty. Well, you show the wallet has got the coin collector's case in, but you show the coin collector's case is empty. You then give everything for the spectator to hold on to. They hold on to it in between their hands. And then when they hold on to it in between their hands, when the corner disappears, it appears inside um, the case, inside the wallet. And I gave it a good review for good reason. It's a good trick. However... I've now worked this in in the real world a few times. And there's a couple of issues which I've addressed. And the first issue is sometimes, however clever the gimmick is, sometimes it actually is quite difficult to have the gimmick um, do what I need it to do. I don't want to expose Jay's method, but it is very difficult sometimes for the gimmick to do what you need it to do. And if that happens, the only way to deal with it is to kind of fumble with the little black wallet a bit until um, you can kind of manually do what the gimmick allows you to do. Again, I'm trying to be very vague here. Um, and that, that was a bit of an issue for me. I had that happen a few times in live performance. The other issue is I don't think the wallet really added to anything. The whole idea of it going into a coin collector's case is great. The wallet didn't really add anything to it, in my opinion. And it actually took some stuff away because it meant you had a, a, a reset that took about 10 or 15 seconds where you had to put everything back in place. So what I've done is I've stripped this right down. I'm still using the coin collector's case, but that's all I'm using. And I hand that out for the, at the beginning. And I, 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 what I'm using instead is I'm using a thumb palm spellbound move. Now, if you don't know what the thumb palm spellbound move is, you can learn it directly from Netrix when we launch. That's right. It's one of 300 slides that will be in the slide section when we launch just saying uh, there's many other places you can learn the thumb palm uh, spellbound as well but the whole idea is you do this thumb palm spellbound move with the coin collector's case and it, it, it the reactions are through the roof compared to doing it the original way that jay published because you've got this visual moment where this corner just appears inside this coin collector's case which is way better in my opinion than the method that jay used so i wanted to highlight this for anybody who's got clearly impossible i'm going to perform the routine for you and if you like it this way feel free to use it instead Right, Jack, I'm going to show you another trick right now, okay? Yeah. Uh, using a pack of 52 playing cards. They're all there, yeah? Yep. And you're going to pick a card. Before you do pick a card, I'm going to show you this. Have you ever seen one of these before? Uh, no. It's a coin collector's case. Oh. 
Um, and there's no coin in this. It, do you see it's stapled on all four sides? What you would do is if you're collecting a coin, you'd put the coin in there, staple it on all four sides. That way you can see it very clearly, but you can't get into it. It Excellent. stops the coin from being tarnished. Um, we're going to use that in a minute. Uh, and also, we're going to use this deck of cards. And you're going to pick a card. Now, we're going to pick a card in a very, very fair way. I'm going to deal cards onto the table, one at a time. And as I do, any time you want to, just say stop. And you can take as long as you want. I don't mind. Stop. Right there. Are you sure? Yeah. You're happy with this one, yeah? So yeah. you could have stopped on any card, but you stopped here. I'm just going to tear the corner off the card, okay? Okay. Now I want you to watch. Watch the corner. Don't worry about the rest of the cards. Watch the corner. If I just wave this coin collector's place over the top of my hand and snap, what happens is that corner completely disappears. Huh? How weird's that? You think that's kind of weird? Very now, have you ever seen David Blaine push a card through a window? No. Well, it's a classic trick that a lot of magicians do. I'm not going to push a card through a window. I'm going to try and push something through this coin collector's case. I'm actually going to try and get the corner, the invisible corner that's disappeared into this coin collector's case on three. One, two, three. Uh -huh. Feel it. That's not inside. That that's that's actually inside. It's not like it's it's on it's not like it's stuck on the outside. That's actually inside. And the weird thing is if you actually look here, it matches that torn corner exactly. So there you go, guys. That's another 5x5 five five in the bag. Thank you very much for joining me again this week. I hope you really enjoyed it. I did, and uh, I hope to see you again very soon on the channel. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. you just got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with a with a, uh, a, a interview, a Talk Magic interview at 9 o'clock. There's going to be a shorts at 2 o'clock and a live at 6 o'clock. And then don't forget, on Wednesday, it is the next episode of the Talk Magic podcast. No. The Magic Podcast. I have too many podcasts. It's the Magic Podcast with myself and Lloyd Barnes, which is setting the magic world on fire right now. So make sure you check that out. One more time, thank you very much for joining me this week. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.